Morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Ian and Don Ramica, for uh, putting on this event. A hand, let's give a hand of applause to them because they put a lot of work into this. So thank you very much for doing that. Everybody, hear me okay? All right. So and thank you very much for all the other sponsors that helped put this event on. I'm excited to be here this morning to talk about my company and, and give you guys some insight on credit card processing. Everybody's favorite subject, right? How many of us own a business here? How many of you guys love getting uh, phone calls from credit card guys promising they're going to save you money? <laughs> you ever had that? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, the truth about credit card processing is what I'm going to try to uh, uh, show you today. Is there some kind of clicker thing? Or Come down and get that. Oh, thank you. So before we get started, uh, my name is Steve Sibitoni. I'm actually the CEO of 360 Payment Solutions. Or, thank you. We're a locally based credit card processing company. We're a small business as well, and I'm excited to help be here today to talk about small business and how uh, a lot of these vendors can help your business uh, grow and achieve the things that you want to do. So hopefully I can figure this out. So what I would like to do, I got about 10 minutes here. I'm going to fly through this, give you guys as much information as possible regarding credit card processing, the truths and pitfalls behind some of the things that you guys hear and probably don't necessarily get the full story on. So quickly, I'm going to go over a little bit about the payments background. It's a little older. This, this uh, presentation is a little old, but it's a little older than 50 years old now. And uh, there's three main parties involved. You have the card associations, and I kind of compare them to the, uh, the NFL or the NBA, the actual league that puts the rules together and controls the pricing of, of uh, you know, credit interchange and things like that. You have the card issuing companies. Those are the companies that actually give you the credit card. So some of you may bank at Chase. Some at B of A, Capital One, what's in your wallet. Every time you get a credit card from one of those banks and you use it somewhere, they're the ones that are making the majority of the interchange fees that you pay as a business owner. Everybody always blames it on the credit card processing companies saying that they're the ones making all the money. It's not the case. It's really the banks that are issuing the credit cards that are generating most of the revenue from what you're paying in fees. And then you have the acquiring companies, the acquiring banks, and that's pretty much what we are. We're a credit card processing company that basically moves the data from the credit card itself to uh, the Federal Reserve and a lot of other places. We pay all the associated parties and then we put the, money, the rest of the money in your bank account. That's pretty much how it works. But the majority of the rates that you pay do go back to the issuing banks. I won't get into it, but there's some major uh, industry events that pretty much have brought rates down. Today, rates are lower than almost ever uh, because of the debit card rate, uh, lawsuits that have occurred uh, in Visa, MasterCard uh, industry. But basically now, debit card rates are extremely low, and you should be paying less today than you have before in the past. So some misconceptions and pitfalls to watch out for. How many of you guys have heard of uh, credit card leasing terminals? You guys, may, maybe some of you have leased a terminal before. I'm here today to tell you, don't do that. It's bad. Uh, leasing equipment terminals today are a couple hundred bucks. There's no reason to really invest a, a $50 monthly lease payment for four years that you can't get out of. Uh, for a credit card machine that you could buy off of eBay, m most likely for two to three hundred dollars. So some things that you want to avoid is leasing a credit card machine. Uh, PCI fees, a lot of processing companies charge them. We happen to not do that because we think that PCI is our responsibility and yours, and there's no reason to really charge a fee. Usually they charge a fee, that money goes back into the processor's pocket, uh, and it is, it's set there to be almost a penalty for you not being PCI, for not taking a survey. Uh, we don't do that, and we recommend that you shouldn't have that on your statements. Um, every processor has a long-term contract. Not true. You don't need a, to be in a contract with your processor. If you are, talk to them about it. They could probably let you out of it. Uh, every processor has different rates. The truth about credit card processing is we all have the same rates. Whether you're with me or anybody else in the industry, we all have the same wholesale rates. And our business is just like most of yours, where it's a wholesale and retail business. Interchange is the wholesale. You can't negotiate those rates. You can affect them based upon how you take the cards, but the only thing you can negotiate is the markup above wholesale. And then finally, some, a lot of business owners want to know what, what is my rate or what is the rate your credit card processor is giving you, and the truth is there's over 250 to 300 rates in Visa and MasterCard. What you really want to know is your effective rate. You can determine your effective rate by taking your total fees divided by your total sales. That tells you what you're overall paying, and that's what the number that you really want to pay attention to. Some, some advice on equipment. I know uh, 
Uh, PayPros is here. I, they're a great company. They have integration built. Now, I'm here to tell you that integration with your software is very smart. It's, it's good to integrate your payment processing with your software. It reduces risk of making mistakes. It makes your life easier. It makes it a lot more efficient for taking cards. And that's what they grew their business on, and they did a great job doing it. Uh, purchase equipment, don't lease. I already spoke about that. New terminals are pretty inexpensive. They're only three to $400 these days, and you can buy a high-speed terminal. I recommend getting on high speed. It'll help your, your business a lot as far as processing. And, and additionally, uh, you want to pay attention to running scans on your network if you're going to process on high speed. Uh, PCI compliance is very important in that aspect. And then EMV stands for Euro MasterCard Visa. It's the new chip cards that are coming out. from uh, A lot of uh, countries in Europe already have these chip cards. It is coming to America. And if you haven't heard about it yet, you soon will. You will need to invest in a new piece of processing equipment to be able to take the new chip cards that are coming out. So make sure you uh, are looking for that. October of 2015 is the deadline for you to be able to get those, those machines. If you don't get the machine prior to that time period or after that time period, the liability will shift to you in the case of a breach. So it's important that you do get those machines for the capability of taking EMV cards. Uh, American Express, I'm going to shamelessly plug my company a couple things here. They're coming out with a new program. We're one of the first companies to have it. It's called OptBlue. And basically what's happening is they're, for the first time, negotiating their rates and they're lowering their rates that you guys all hate. I know how many people do not enjoy American Express. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, they're coming down. The rates are coming down. You're going to have an opportunity now to pay less and get your money at the same time as your Visa and MasterCard if you aren't already. It's all going to show up on the same statement now. Things are getting better with American Express. They recognize that they're not getting the usage that they really desire. Five minutes or no, less? Two minutes? All right. Uh, mobile products today, there's, you know, you've heard of Squared. We have the capability now to process an iPad, iPhones. Uh, there's iPad POS systems out there. I'll skip that real quick. Uh, customer analytics, this is something I'm really excited about, something my company's partaking in. There's uh, new software being developed today for both social media and for payment analytics to be able to track how many individual customers you have, how many times they come back, how many of them are new versus repeat. And a lot of processors are coming out with the data. They're compiling data from many different sources and to be able to tell you more about your customer and how you can market to them to grow your business. So that is something you should look for in a payment processor. Uh, this is a little bit about us, our history. We were incorporated on Janu January 25th, 2011. Uh, we're currently, we have 1,600 clients, mostly here in the Bay Area. We, we're a local company. Uh, we have over 20 employees now. We're partnered with seven financial institutions, several trade associations, a bunch of software companies, and that's Roxy, our, our office ma mascot, and that's our 360 team right there. Our green monster, you might see it driving around. It's our uh, local technician's car that we have. And we like to say an ideal world under the 360 umbrella, we have everything that I just spoke to you about. Uh, and again, a shameless plug here, but uh, we, we're a small company that cares about our customers. We give you guys the personal touch to an impersonal industry. Uh, we guarantee our rates. We don't charge PCI fees. We don't have termination fees. When we built this company, we thought, if I was a business owner, how would I want my merchant processor to treat me? And that's how we built, built our company. So with that, thank you very much for your time today. And thank you again for, uh, to Extreme Impact for putting this uh, event on. Very excited to be here today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Steve.